Innovation has a cost. A radical new design can change the world, but revolution carries risk. Sometimes, all you need is competence. The G36. A modern assault rifle made for a modern Germany. So why did the Germans take so long to adopt a 5.56mm rifle? Why did H&K abandon their roller-delayed blowback designs? And what's the problem with a plastic-framed gun? The 1960s and 70s saw a significant shift in small arms design. New materials and new doctrines threatened to make the mid-century battle rifle obsolete. Smaller, lighter rifles firing intermediate rounds were in fashion. The Americans had the M16, the Soviets the AKM. West Germany had been using the G3 since the 1950s. It was a serviceable rifle, but there was a growing desire for something new. Something more fitting for the space age. One technology that seemed promising for a future rifle was caseless ammunition. Replacing the traditional breast cartridge with a self-contained solid propellant block. This saves cost and weight, reduces cartridge size and eliminates extraction and ejection. The theoretical benefits are clear, but putting caseless rounds into practice is fraught with technical difficulty. Most of NATO had abandoned the idea by the end of the 1960s. The West Germans were more determined. They made a prolonged effort to perfect the technology. Heckler and Koch led a conglomerate tackling the issue. The Gesellschaft für Hülsenlöser Gewehrsystem, or Association for Caseless Rifle Systems. Their caseless rifle was the G11. Two decades of prototypes and iterative improvement followed. One by one, technical hurdles were overcome and the G11 inched towards a viable design. In 1990, the German government certified the G11 for use with the Bundeswehr. They could replace the Cold War era G3 with a modern rifle that was, quite frankly, a marvel of engineering. Except it never happened. This was amidst the German reunification, the tail end of the Cold War. Budgets were being radically reassessed. Spending billions of Deutschmarks on an unproven rifle was a tough proposition. So H&K were 180 million Deutschmarks in debt and had nothing to show for it. The G3 remained in service and now the newly unified Germany was desperate for a replacement. Any new rifle would have to take a much more conservative approach. A standard configuration in a standard calibre. H&K were not unfamiliar with 5.56mm designs. They had already adapted the G3 to the calibre back in the mid-60s with the HK-33. As the Germans were dead set on their caseless initiative, the HK-33 was intended for export. It proved successful finding a market in Brazil, Thailand and Malaysia. In 1980, NATO finally settled on the 5.56x45mm as its standard intermediate round. In response, H&K hedged their bets a little with an updated version of the HK-33, the G41 introduced in 1981. It was designed to operate with NATO standard ammunition and magazines. If selected, it would be a companion weapon of the G11 used by second line troops. But compared to the M16 platform, the G41 was twice as expensive and 25% heavier. No surprise, it didn't catch on. H&K needed an entirely new rifle design, something lightweight, adaptable, and, ideally, inexpensive. Thus began Project 50. Instead of a full steel construction, extensive use of polymers reduced weight. H&K's roller-delayed blowback mechanism replaced with gas operation with a short-stroke piston. This helped to save weight 
and meant that the rifle could operate with a wider variety of ammunition. The design was finalized in 1995 and its adoption was approved. Production began the following year. The new rifle was designated the G36. It wasn't some space age wonder rifle, but it was on time, on budget, and built with proven technology. It entered service with the Bundeswehr from 1997, replacing the now venerable G3. The Spanish armed forces replaced their Setme rifles with the G36 from 1999. Today, the G36 and its variants are used by police and military units worldwide. The original G36 design had a dual sight, a 3.5 times scope and a 1 times red dot. The G36V was a variant made for export, which had a 1.5 times scope instead of the original sight unit and a NATO bayonet mount. The G36K was a carbine variant with a shorter barrel and a bottom rail. The G36C was shorter still a compact variant with rails instead of the integrated sight. The MG36 was a support weapon variant. It had a heavier barrel and large 100 round magazine for use in automatic rifle rolls. There's also the SL8, a semi-automatic civilian version, and the R8, a straight pull bolt action. The G36 also served as the basis for the XM8. This was a rifle system designed for the Objective Individual Combat Weapon Program, a US endeavor to find a replacement for the M4 carbine. It wasn't successful. The XM8's performance did exceed that of the M4, but it wasn't deemed enough to warrant replacement. Altogether, the G36 has been a relatively successful rifle, but despite its conservative design, it's by no means perfect. The integrated scope has suffered some criticism. The original dual optic unit is prone to fogging, and some of the export scopes struggle to hold a zero. More alarming is the tendency of the polymer frame to warp under high temperatures. The plastic that surrounds the barrel can melt under sustained fire. With the optics mounted to the top plastic rail, this can result in a loss of accuracy. In 2012, reports from Afghanistan detailed the severity of the issue. The situation exacerbated by a warmer climate and lengthy battles. Ammunition was blamed at first, but it was clear that there was a fundamental issue with the rifle. So by 2015, talks of replacing the weapon began. The Hainal MK556 was the initial winner of the contract. After a legal kerfuffle involving H&K patents, the HK416A8 was selected instead. Designated as the G95A1, deployment begins in 2024. So while the G36 time in service has been fleeting, for better or for worse, it has made an impression. It started turning up on screen by 1999, with an early appearance in The World Is Not Enough. An assassin uses it in an attempt to snipe James Bond in the opening sequence. The G36 is well suited to its appearance in Bond. Its black, angled exterior give it a futuristic look without being unconventional. At a glance, you can tell it's a rifle, but a high-tech one, and whoever wields it means business. Usefully, it's also divorced from the political association of other guns. It's not a Kalashnikov, nor an M16. It's somewhere in between. An artifact of the post-Cold War era. Its well-dressed appearance grants an air of authority to those who carry it. The protruding barrel and raked handguard give it an innate pointability. It's capable of demonstrating clear intent on screen. It's a weapon of cool, collected will. A tactical choice for an organized force, someone who can afford the best and all the accessories to match. The perfect fit for law enforcement, special forces, or well-funded mercenaries. Its emergence also perfectly coincides with the rising popularity of first-person shooters. 
The G36 first started to turn up in the tactical shooters of the early 2000s, the SWAT series and Rainbow Six. At the time, it was a new bit of kit, so it was a cool thing to see. In games with an arsenal of realistic weapons, the G36 slots right in. Functionally, it's a weapon without many surprises. Other than its outward appearance, it fills exactly the same role as any other assault rifle. The one distinguishing feature it does have is rarely seen. The unusual dual optical sight, as used by the original non-export variants. It is present in some games, like Stalker, but most of the time you'll see the G36 with either the export telescopic sight or the iron sights. Despite being deprived of its unique sight, the G36 remains a popular weapon. The Germans love it, of course. Beyond that, it's refreshing to see a modern weapon that isn't another AR-15 clone. It has an understated appeal, not often exceptional in any aspect of its performance. But it doesn't have to be. It's not a revolution. It's just a rifle. The G36 was a product of compromise. A pragmatic crash to Earth from space-age dreams. It was rushed done to a tight budget, and lacked any meaningful innovation. But despite this, it wasn't half bad. Germany needed a rifle, and that's exactly what they got. It wasn't perfect, it melted sometimes, but given the circumstances of its conception, it was destined to be a stopgap. The G36. Cool. Composed. Competent. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.